You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to Peace Explorer with your host, Dr. Gail Lash. Dr. Lash's company, Tourism for Peace, helps to encourage people to get to know one another and to honor the diversity of the human race and the sacredness of Mother Earth. So now, please welcome the host of Peace Explorer, Dr. Gail Lash. Hello and welcome to Peace Explorer on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is your host, Dr. Gail Lash, and we're so happy to have you here today. Today's show is titled Learning to Be a Cultural Detective, (laughs) and today you'll learn how to improve your intercultural competence. I have a wonderful guest that's coming on who's head of cultural detective, and we'll talk about that and talk with her. First of all, I just want to talk about that it is so important that we understand and get to know each other around the planet. Uh, Many of you know, if you've listened to my other shows, that I've traveled a lot and I really truly leave with my company, Tourism for Peace, that we can get to know each other. We can become friends and work together in both commerce and in just building relationships that can promote peace on the planet. So we may live in many different nations, but we really are connected in these these various human ways, as I said, through economics, through food, through our weather, you know, and through our biology. Obviously, we're all homo sapiens. We're all one human species. And so even though there are differences in the way that we eat and we live and we pray, we celebrate the languages we speak, we are this global society. And the earth actually depends on us working together. Uh, Nature is very important to me. and, And I do work with communities that are usually right on the ground doing in rural communities actually growing the food and developing the ecotourism and helping to preserve the forests, the animals, the wildlife, the watersheds. And it's really important that we start to look at how our, we are interrelated and how our commerce and our interactions with our businesses can really reflect this, can really help to support Mother Earth in providing for all of us, because it really is important that, it, that she does. Now, let me ask you, have you ever traveled to another country or another culture and found that there really are some cultural differences that perhaps could be unsettling? Perhaps you went to a country where you did not know the language. And that, of course, right off the bat would be a place where you might feel kind of helpless or have to rely on other people to get around because the street signs, the directions, finding your way may be difficult. And it is it is kind of this feeling of, wow, I have to change who I am or I have to change the way I'm working to be able to just act in a normal daily life, to find where my group that I'm meeting is, to find out where the restroom is, where the restaurant is, where the meetings might be. And so just keep in mind when you do travel that even though these differences might be a bit unsettling, it's important not to force others to become like us that doesn't mesh with that society. And so I want to talk about that concept of tolerance. In each show, I introduce a peace concept that we talk about, and these actually come from the Virtues Project, which is virtuesproject.com. You can find out more about them there. And there are these peace concepts of how to act and speak in these virtuous ways. And so I want to introduce the concept of tolerance. And to me, 
you know, tolerance actually can have almost kind of a negative connotation of, well, I'll just tolerate you. That's not what we're talking about here. We're not talking about just um, accepting someone tangentially for who they are, but really practicing the tolerance within yourself of, you know, I may not know it all. What I do may not be actually the quote, right way it's done in this society. (laughs) So this virtues concept, uh, the peace concept and virtues project has a deck of cards. They also have a book that talks about how to practice these these, um, virtues, both in families and in schools with teachers. And so let me read you what's on the card for tolerance. It says, being tolerant is accepting differences. You don't expect others to think, look, speak, or act just like you. You are free of prejudice, knowing that all people have feelings, needs, hopes, and dreams. Tolerance is also accepting things you wish were different with patience and flexibility. And then it gives a practice of tolerance. So you are practicing tolerance when you build unity with others who are different from you, are free of prejudice make others feel included by reaching out in friendliness, don't complain about things that cannot be changed, change yourself instead of trying to change others, accept people the way they are, faults and all. And there's an affirmation on the card as well. It says, I am tolerant. I appreciate differences. I overlook people's faults. I accept things I cannot change with good grace. So check that out. We have a Facebook page called Peace Explorer, and I will post that card uh, on that Facebook group so you can read it later as well. So it really is about getting to know the people in that other culture and really appreciating that diversity, those differences, and being respectful of that particular culture, that particular society. I remember when I was traveling to Indonesia, I was working with a, a group of villagers to develop a guiding cooperation, a corporation, and I was in Bali, and I went to visit some of the beautiful temples that were there. And in Bali, as in that culture, the left hand is considered the unclean hand, and the right hand is considered the clean hand. So if you're touching anything sacred, you only do it with your right hand, never with your left hand. And here I was walking up and down these beautiful tiered steps with the water flowing in the gardens, and I reached out to touch the water. And the the guide I was with went, no, stop, (laughs) because I had put out my left hand to do so. And that would have been sacrilege to stick my left hand in the flowing water at the temple. So things like that we have to be aware of when we're in another culture uh, that are just different than perhaps the way you may have been raised or the way you may visit a place and experience it. At the same time, when also I was in Indonesia, uh, the villagers all wore, wore sarongs. So I could not go around in my my slacks, my jeans, my hiking pants. I had to wear a sarong as well and a T-shirt. And one must also cover their shoulders because the shoulders are sacred. And so as a woman, I could not show my shoulders. I had to wear T-shirts with sleeves. That was a very interesting time. And so, of course, I bought some beautiful sarongs and would wear them in the village. And and um, and even hiking up the mountain <laughs> that we did to develop our tourism, uh, um, different tourism packages that the guiding association wanted to put together. So think about where you've been in the world and how you maybe have meshed with that society or not <laughs> as you've been visiting them and what you could have done perhaps a little differently to make it happen maybe a little smoother, uh, learn some of the language or ask and learn some of the cultures. And that's what we're actually going to be talking about today is the cultural detective actually has these lessons, these um, wonderful opportunities to learn about different cultures around the world. So we're going to take a short break now, and please stay tuned, because after the break, I will bring on my guest, Diane Sapphire of Cultural Detective, and we'll dive deep into the topic 
of how to work with diverse cultures around the world. This is your host, Dr. Gail Lash, and you're listening to Peace Explorer on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.betterhomeandgarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor covering, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted, and every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, no, there is hope, there is help, there is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Welcome back, everybody, to Peace Explorer on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. This is your host, Dr. Gail Lash. So, just before the break, we were talking about traveling around the world and how it is to perhaps be in a culture where you may not know the language or know the the local customs. And today, our guest is Diane Sapphire of Cultural Detective, and she has developed a group that the Cultural Detective team who have these amazing opportunities to take classes and learn how to actually learn about different cultures you may be, might be traveling to or actually doing business with around the world. It's very, very important. And also, please know that because we're live, we love questions. <laughs> so if you do have any questions for Diane or me as we get into this show, please call in to 866-451-1451 to ask your question. So let me introduce Diane. She, let me give you her bio. It's really very amazing. Diane Hoffner Sapphire is an intellect, intercultural organizational development consultant and photographer. In her 38-plus year career, she has worked with people from over 100 and different countries, including several Fortune 20 CEOs. She has conducted executive-level coaching and team effectiveness interventions, helping manage several mergers and acquisitions, facilitates global managerial training, and trains others to do the same. Diane is author of Communication High Wire, Leveraging the Power of Diverse Communication Styles and Several Simulations for Learning How to Bridge Cultural Differences. And she speaks Japanese, Spanish, and English. She's the founder of culturaldetective.com, a collaborative project involving over 160 professionals worldwide that help individuals, communities, and organizations to build intercultural competence, respect, equity, collaboration, and justice in our world. Diane has a lifelong passion for intercultural collaboration and inclusiveness, originating actually in her childhood experiences in the multicultural crossroads that is Flagstaff, Arizona. When asked to write an essay on the U.S. as a melting pot when she was 12 years old, she wrote that it was an erroneous allegory and that a mosaic would be a much more appropriate metaphor for multiculturalism, because in a mosaic, each piece is unique, beautiful, and broken, and yet each piece is crucial to the success of the whole. 
Her philosophy in in middle age has changed much since has not changed much since that childhood essay, and she remains convinced that each of us holds a piece of the jigsaw puzzle that is a solution for living together on this planet sustainably and justly, and that if we can learn to hear and value another's perspectives, we can make our own dreams a reality. So in addition to her cross-cultural endeavors, Diane recently had a one-woman photography shows in Paris and Vienna, and in March, we'll have her first in her hometown of Mazitlan, Mexico. She is planning an edited volume of photos called Cliché or Consequential, which proceeds will benefit refugees and migrants worldwide. You can find out more about Diane and her company, Cultural Detective, at www.culturaldetective.com. And Cultural Detective also has pages on Facebook, LinkedIn, Google, and Twitter. So welcome, Diane, to Peace Explorer. Thank you very much, Gail. I think it is just awesome that you have a, a radio show exploring peace so needed in our world. Bless your heart. Oh, thank you. Well, you are doing work very much to create peace in the world because getting to know each other is so important and how we live and act and in our various cultures really needs to be understood to be able to become friends and do business together. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us more about what Cultural Detective is and why you started this company. Sure. I uh, originally start well, the, the company, we, I have had a consulting company for a, quite a long time. Cultural Detective emerged as a side project originally because I had so many colleagues around the world who were so very talented, but many of whom worked on their own. And I thought, I really want, and, and for large organizations like the UN or even NGOs like Doctors Without Borders and especially for multinationals, they don't want to hire sole practitioners. They really want to you know, have a one source to go to. So I thought, is there a way to really harness some of the best expertise in this intercultural diversity field and uh, make it available to people? So it started as a side project to develop materials uh, with some of those best minds, and I had uh, selected five different teams of people to develop uh, packages, basically, you know, working with French or working with U.S. Americans. But uh, it was so successful Um, Shell Oil right away came to us and said, you know, Diane, this cultural detective stuff, it's the best global management development tool we've used ever, you know, be it Nigeria or in The Hague or in Houston. So can you guys go out and develop one for every culture in which we do business? And, you know, we kind of say, well, (laughs) give us some time. (laughs) Slow down a little It's a tall order. (laughs) Yeah, that's a tall order. Oh, my goodness. So uh, right now we have about 160 authors, so every package, and they're not nas- just national packages. What we're really trying to, you know, people, we, we are all unique individuals, and, and we are all influenced by multiple cultures. So, you know, I have a generational influence. I'm a baby boomer. I'm a woman. I've ra- been raised as a woman. I am a straight woman, so I've been, you know, uh, been raised with that cultural influence as well. Um, I'm a white woman, German American. Uh, I'm what else? I was raised a Catholic, so I have that Christian. You know, we all have so many cultural influences on us. So we're really trying to find a tool that helps us. You know, it's so complicated, and yet cultural detective starts very simply, just looking at interaction between people, what went wrong, how could we fix it, and you go from there. So it's quite an organic process. Well, I know years ago when I found Cultural Detective, I was traveling for my ecotourism work, and and I actually accessed some of your na- national products about, like when I went to N- Indonesia or Thailand, to find out, okay, what are the cultural differences that I need to be aware of, like I was saying at the beginning of the show, and and some of them, of course, I wasn't aware until I got there, but your your national packages were really wonderful because they had simulations, they had stories, they had uh, examples that you had to figure out, like, okay, what are the the, the norms in this society, by and large, of course, uh, being sort of making a good generalization, if you will, but, but the things that a visitor would need to know. Uh, so 
We are going to take a short break, and actually we'll explore that. I want to talk to you about your packages and now what you're doing uh, after we come back from the break. So thank you for tuning in to Peace Explorer. This is your host, Dr. Gail Lash, and you're listening on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Peace Explorer on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is your host, Dr. Gail Lash, and we're here with my guest, Diane Sapphire of Cultural Detective. Diane, I was mentioning before the break that I used to look into your national products, uh, the ones, the packages that talked about how it is if I was going to visit Japan or if I was visiting Indonesia, what might be the cultural norms of that society or, or ideas that I'd need to be aware of. Explain a little bit about these different packages. What what does one find in those if I were to open it up now today and do business, let's say, in Egypt, <laughs> for example? <laughs> You bet. And my guess is, Gail, you, you have uh, been on the forefront of a lot of this, but you probably used our packages back when they were still exclusively PDF or printed materials, which is how we you started got it. in 2004. <laughs> yeah. So now we have Cultural Detective Online, which is fantastic because it's much more how we originally envisioned it. So with one subscription fee, which we try to keep very, very affordable because we want this to be accessible. We want to actually build justice and peace in this world, have people use them. So with one subscription fee, you get access to all the content in there, which sort of blows people's minds. Um, yes. So the content, um, like, uh, it was interesting. I just uh, traveled to Dubai about a few weeks ago for this conference, and it was so interesting, the cross-cultural stuff that went on there. I can give you a couple of stories, but uh, what I like about it is if you go in there and you try to learn about the United Arab Emirates, for example, and you, but you have a critical incident that involves German people, you have access to all the German stuff as well as all the Emirati stuff. You can look at both of it. It t talks to you about uh, core values, but really the core of Cultural Detective is stories because stories, that it's the oldest way of teaching in the world. Stories bind us. Stories motivate us. Stories are a lot of times from our childhood are what have taught us our values in the first place. So what's really nice is you go in and you look at somebody's story and what they lived through and you look at what happened, and you try to figure it out, and you say, well, they did that because they were that person, but they also did it because, you know, for example, when I, at this conference, it was co-organized by the Emirates and China. And uh, on the second day of the conference, all, well, all the speakers, we were staying at a hotel, and it was a very international crew. 
And on the second day, we, the speakers had been told to meet in the lobby at 8 o'clock. Well, come 8.30, uh, the organizers are not there yet. The, neither the Chinese <laughs> nor the Emiratis are there. You know, typical time differences, right? So the Germans right. are, like, panicked by now. That, you know, they're very time conscious in general. Um, and they're like, we got to take the shuttle now because the conference starts at 9 and it's going to take us 30 minutes to get there and blah, blah, blah. You know, and I'm trying to bridge, and I'm saying, you know, they'll come, and obviously the conference is not going to start because here are all the presenters and <laughs> the organizers, and time's more fluid here, you know, and I'm trying to calm them down. Well, eventually they ended up just hijacking the shuttle bus and going ahead of time, and there was a group of us that didn't want to insult our hosts, and so we waited behind, but we ended up going in two different groups in the morning, and you know, it's just kind of classic, but Cultural Detective helps you figure out what happened there. What part of that was my personality? What part of that was his nationality? What part of that is just a multicultural dynamic? You know, and, and how can we prevent that next time? Or, you know, how could the hosts learn from it as well as the guest speakers? <laughs> <laughs> what a great story. You remind me of when I was working in Belize in Central America and and there I was working with landowners who had developed an ecotourism sanctuary for monkeys and I was getting some land survey documents from the ministry of, uh, of the land office and so I had to go into Belmapan, the, the capital, and to get these documents. And I remember them saying to me, oh, come back next month because they're not ready and, you know, they'll right. be ready then. So then I would come back right. next month and they'd say, oh, no, come back in a couple months. We're not quite ready yet. <laughs> and I think right. it took over six months to get them. But I'm like, okay, I'm on Belize time. It's all right. <laughs> right. Time yeah. is so, so key. And what's nice about Cultural Detective Online is you can uh, subscribe to the system as a group of people, so your work team or even your family. And you can, um, in addition to debriefing or looking at the stories that exist there, you can upload your own stories. So, for example, I'm 57. I have a 22-year-old. I love to upload stories of miscommunication just between me and my son, you know, and try to figure it out because sometimes as a parent, you start going crazy, you know. I can't have a conversation purely in Snapchat. It doesn't work for me. Um, and so what's wonderful is as a work team, then, you can all contribute to that. So one, I hope I have time for this story, but I have a, a there was a lady in a class of mine a U.S. American executive woman, very, very powerful, very capable. And we had a class of about 25 people. And she suddenly proclaimed to me during the class, she says, you know, the Dutch are sexist. You know, and I'm kind of caught off guard at this because of all the people, <laughs> of all the cultures in the world, the Dutch would not be the most sexist people that would come to my mind. They're pretty darn egalitarian across gender. <laughs> I said, well, can you tell me a little bit about what happened? She says, yeah, well, you know, this IT guy in Holland, he works for me, and I asked him to do a job for me, and he said, no. And I said, okay. Did he say anything else? No, pretty much he just said no. So then I told him how important it was and how timely it was. Again, time, right? And, you right. know, I said it was his job. He better do it. He came back, and he had the audacity to tell me that uh, – he couldn't do it because his schedule was already full, and he prioritized. He had jobs with uh, Germany and with England. So he's not only sexist; he's Eurocentric. <laughs> so you know, by now the whole class is engaged in this story. So we ended up putting the cultural detective worksheet up on the board and sort of debriefing it with her to help her understand what were her what was her common sense. You know, because our whole a lot of what we say is there is no such thing as common sense. You know, we all want to hire people with common sense. We want to have children with common sense. We want to work with people with common sense. But the idea behind common sense is it has to be shared. So helping her discover what was your worldview, what was your common sense, what was your what were your what was important to you that motivated you to do to behave the way you did, and then where was Ambrose, your IT guy? Where was he coming from? What was important to him? You know, probably he wasn't just trying to insult his boss. That, that's not a very likely scenario. So what were the values that were motivating him? And obviously she was more time conscious. She was more control oriented, wanting to get things done, uh, wanting to please the customer. Okay. And then he was much more consensus oriented, 
wanting to honor the commitments he'd already made and not overwork his people. So I know we're going to break. I'm happy to continue. Yeah, that, we, was, we are. Yeah, we, you know, we, we are. We need to take a short break, and we'll be back to finish up the nuggets of that story when we come back. This is your host, Dr. Gail Lash, and you're listening to Peace Explorer on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Psychologist, master certified coach, and CEO of the executive and organizational development firm, True North Leadership, Dr. Relly Nadler brings his expertise in emotional intelligence to keynotes, consulting, coaching, and training. He is the author of Leader's Playbook and Leading with Emotional Intelligence that lays out tips and tools for effective leadership. Dr. Nadler has designed multi-day executive boot camps for high achievers in Fortune 500 companies and has coached CEOs, presidents, and their staff and developed and delivered innovative leadership programs for such organizations as Anheuser-Busch, BMW, MCI, EDS, DreamWorks Animation, the U.S. Navy, and Vanguard Health Systems. To learn more and get your free iPhone app highlighting his tools with videos, leadership keys, visit www.truenorthleadership.com today. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Welcome back, everyone, to Peace Explorer on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is your host, Dr. Gail Lash, and I'm here with my guest, Diane Sapphire of Cultural Detective. So, Diane, you were just sharing a story and the nuggets of what was learned between a um, oh, a lady from the United no the United States working with a That's Dutch uh, employee. Yes. Right. Right. And so her Dutch employee, he was he was trying not to waste her time. He was valuing her time. He was showing her respect by being honest with her and upfront. He didn't want to dilly dally or beat around the bush. You know, he he was valuing her. And uh, basically, what they found out, uh, we so we put the cultural detective worksheet up on the board, and we helped her understand what what was her common sense, where was she coming from, and maybe where was he coming from. And it started to open her mind because she had started with, he's sexist. And she started to see, <laughs> wow, why in the heck did I ever think he was sexist? That's so my own experience. That's my personal, you know, the, the struggles I've gone through in my own career that I'm projecting onto him. And he's just mm-hmm. trying, you know. And so what she realized is that they needed a process for getting into the IT budget you know, in an earlier way. So we debriefed it on the wall and everybody in the class participating and the bridges we came up with to bridge the cultural differences and bring out the best of everybody, work together better. Uh, she ended up deciding to travel to The Hague that, that uh, following week and she met with him face to face and she basically apologized because she figured out that she had come across as a really rude, pushy American crazy lady. <laughs> <laughs> and then he actually, in turn, realized that he had probably seemed very Eurocentric and very cut and dry, very uh, uh, rude to her. So they ended up finding a new way to make decisions around around uh, budgeting, and he had the practice, or while well, the whole organization in The Hague had the practice of scheduling out for the whole year for the IT budget. So they ended up uh, they ended up having a process a business process improvement as well. You know, it improved how they make their decisions, how they fund things for the long term. So it, in addition to build to improving the relationship between Laura and Ambrose, it also improved the overall business. So it was a win win all the way around. That's excellent. 
Uh, thank you. That That's a great win-win for business. You're right. And I can see how helpful that would be when any organization is working internationally to be able to actually go through these these maps, if you have, or what are you calling them? They're kind of wheels. They're the cultural norms Value of the lens. society. Value lens. Yes, thank you. <laughs> that's what it is. So explain about this value lens. I know it has certain... Um, parts to it that are universal? Right. Yeah, a value lens is basically, we use this metaphor of a cultural detective because you want to go into a new situation when you're not quite sure what's going on, whether it be with people from a different generation, a different religion, whatever, somebody who's different, you don't know. you got to be like a detective. You go in, you have curiosity, you don't want to jump to conclusions or make uh, judgments, have assumptions. So you want to really look at the facts of the situation. And then a value lens is in the shape of a magnifying glass, like a detective's magnifying glass. And in the glass there, of course, our culture, it's like the sun shining through the glass onto us. Our culture influences us. We take on some of it, and we don't take on other things. You know, like part of, I am U.S. American born, but part of the reason I live in Mexico is because I hate the speed at which the U.S. functions, you know. I, I'm much more relaxed about things, so the time thing really fits better for me. So mm -hmm. the magnifying glass, the value lens, the culture influences us from the outside, but also the way we see the world is colored by our, our cultural, our value lens. So we looked at magnifying glasses two ways. And there's a pie chart then graphically in that magnifying glass, and it's the core values that is held by a certain cultural group or society. So it doesn't mean that everybody who's a baby boomer is going to value these core values, but it does mean that baby boomers as a group uh, tend to value these things. So when you're talking to me, if you have some, you know, question about where in the heck is she coming from, we can look at that value lens and say, you know, maybe that is that value there on uh, hard work is what's motivating Diane right now. Let me ask her. Maybe that, you know, rather than judging her like she's a type A personality or too pushy, maybe I back up and say, hey, are you really, what about this hard work value? Can you talk to me about that and how it affects you? And so instead of a judgment and a negative spiral of a conversation, you get a positive, constructive conversation. Got it. So talk to us about what the pie chart, there are certain components to it of the lens that you look at from each culture. Right, right. So the nice thing about our values or the, the sad thing, I suppose, it actually is, is uh, let's say I value harmony. You know, I like a harmonious life, which is actually pretty true. I lived for 14 years in Japan. So I value harmony. Well, the, the truth is that there is always like a dark side or a negative perception by people who don't share the value in the same way I do. So, for example, while I'm trying to get along and valuing harmony, somebody who values truth might look at me and say, oh, she's so wishy-washy. She never stands up for what she believes in. Right? So you have your ideal, your value that you hold that motivates your behavior, and then you also have a negative perception of how people who don't quite share your values might negatively perceive you. So by the same way, somebody who values truth and wants to always tell the truth, uh, you know, somebody who values harmony might look at them and say, oh, come on, a little white lie once in a while makes people feel a lot better. Stop being so mean. Stop being so exacting. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I, I hadn't thought of it that way, that we can be perceived in various ways. Obviously, even though these may be a core value that we think is, of course, don't you see it? You know, this is so clear to me, but perhaps then you would look at it in a totally different way. So good job. That's an excellent example. Yeah, hmm. well, you, you know, and things like that happen. Um, I know I had worked with a woman not very long ago also, and she was telling me the story of a diversity training that she had been in and participated in. And, of course, I'm a proponent of diversity training. But she basically said to me, diversity training, 
sucks. It's it's ineffective. And you know, oh, I always start this. Question oh, that's okay. No, 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 no. We do need to go to a short break. <laughs> So let us talk about diversity training when we come back in a minute uh, and follow up with that, because I'm very interested in that, actually. I work with the diversity group, so <laughs> we'll talk about that when we come back from the break. This is your host, Dr. Gail Lash. You're listening to Peace Explorer on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is, in fact, the symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Welcome back to Peace Explorer on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. This is your host, Dr. Gail Lash, and I'm here talking with my guest, Diane Sapphire from Cultural Detective. And you can find out more about that website, of uh, that organization, at the website culturaldetective.com. There's also a Facebook group called Cultural Detective as well. So, Diane, you were just talking about, before the break, diversity training sucks. <laughs> or that someone was sharing that with you. Um, I would love to hear more. Tell us more. <laughs> Yeah, so of course I'm a, I've been a diversity practitioner for about 40 years, so I didn't like to hear those words. So especially coming from a woman I admired so much. I mean, she is somebody we would all know. She's a very, very powerful woman leader, person of color, uh, executive in a multinational. She is a Jane. Her religion is that she is a Jane. But she proceeded to tell me why she hated diversity training so much, and she had been in a class where they had everybody line up in a row. You know, many of us have been there. And uh, you all line up side by side, and they give, they say things, and you take one step forward or one step back. So if you're a person of color, take one step back. If you're not a Christian, take one step back, right? So it, the things that are more uh, majority or larger numbers in the world, right, and then or, or more powerful in the society in which you're living. So the way it ended up is after they asked five or six questions, this poor woman is all the way at the back of the room, right? And then most of these other executives who are white males uh, and probably Christian are way at the front of the room. And the diversity, the trainer, the facilitator looked at the group and said, actually, I, I take that back. It wasn't the facilitator. It was the chairman of the board. The chairman was there. And he looked at what happened, and he said, look at that. Look what an inclusive organization we are, because even somebody with that many strikes against her can be successful. Whoa. <laughs> I know. I was so horrified. I said, oh, my God, that is awful. That's the exact opposite goal of that learning exercise. He says, 
Yes, and the facilitator didn't say anything. The facilitator just went on to the next activity. <laughs> wow. Okay, that was a yeah, lost opportunity, so, right? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Exactly the opposite of what you want people to learn, you know, because there was exactly. no talking about how much of a struggle success had been for her. There was no, you had talked in the beginning of your intro, uh, Gail, about, you know, we don't want to have to change who we are. She's an example of a woman who, when she comes to work every day, she probably speaks in a language different at work than she does when she's at home. So when her family members are calling her at work, they're hearing a different voice, a different vocabulary than what she uses when she's at home. You know, she's having to strip a lot of who she is authentically and naturally in order to be successful at work, and none of that dialogue happens. <laughs> wow. Oh, my goodness. That could have been an amazing opportunity to really dive deep into what was going on in the organization, and you're right. It it just created the opposite. Oh, that's a sad story, but, right. but I'm sure not an uncommon one. No, no, no. Unfortunately, we have lots of other wonderful stories. Um, I probably am telling too many, but one of my favorite is the first time cultural detective was ever used. It was used at uh, Texas Instruments down in Dallas by a Mexican-American woman who is a secretary, and she had four or five uh, bosses, you know, white American guys, all of whom worked with Latin America. And she took out Cultural Detective Mexico, and she just sat at lunchtime with them and used that value lens that we just talked about. And she said, you know, I can't offhand think what are all the values, but basically she'd point to Rob, one of her bosses, and she'd say, Rob, remember that time when you da-da-da-da-da-da-da and it went wrong this way? That's because of this value. You didn't understand it, you know. And, hey, Ron, do you remember when this went wrong? Well, three weeks later, she was promoted out of that admin assistant pool into management because they saw that those cross-cultural skills would really help them, their business, succeed in Mexico. So was wow. Like, yay. yay, that's awesome. Yes, yes. And we it, sometimes we get so t caught up in the habit of the culture that we're in that um, we forget to even question Am I right? Is what I'm doing correct? Are other people getting it from what I'm putting forth until there's really a problem? And then something obviously comes up like those examples or what you pointed out with the, the lady from the U.S. and the Dutch employee that really forces you to start to look at that and address it. We really need to be proactive when we go in in the beginning. Exactly. We don't even see that anything's different. We assume everybody's going to do it like us. And then when the difference comes up, a lot of times we flip the other way and we either get angry or upset or nervous or we start walking on eggshells, you know, neither of which is, is helpful. You know, it's almost like a pendulum mm -hmm. going from ignorance over to overreaction. And so we really mm -hmm. have to use a method like cultural detective or some other method to help us find the center of the pendulum you know, to bring out the best in ourselves and others. So I know cultural detective is used a lot in business. We've talked about this and working interculturally uh, in the economic sphere. Has this been used in schools with children? Um, with children, not as much. Uh, we have uh, a, a school district up in Ontario now that is starting to use it. So I'm really looking forward to that. It has been used at the high school level, uh, secondary school level, and a lot of universities, I, dozens and dozens of universities around the world use it. At the university level, it started being used in the, uh, the management schools, quickly went out over to the communication field, psychology, so in a lot of different classes. But now most of our university clients, they actually own a site license so that they can use it not only with students, but they use cultural detective with their faculty and their staff as well in order to build more uh, inclusive and constructive uh, university, universities. <laughs> wow. That's fantastic. No, you're right. The university would be a great setting for cultural detective. 
So again, all of you listening, you can find out more about this at culturaldetective.com. That's C-U-L-T-U-R-A-L-D-E-T-E-C-T-I-V-E.com. And after the break, we'll hear uh, from Diane for just another minute and get to our peace action for the week. We're going to take a short break now. And this is your host, Dr. Gail Lash. You're listening to Peace Explorer on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Are you stressed? Is your stress driving you crazy? Do you know there are many ways to relieve the stress? The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic does just that. Reduce your stress plus so much more. Established in 1997, the Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic offers an approach to wellness for those individuals who choose to either utilize appropriate complementary methods to enhance their current medical care or to those individuals who are on their personal journey toward improved health and wellness through the use of therapeutic bodywork, Reiki energy healing, or hypnosis. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic is owned by Dr. Judy Dean, a registered nurse and board-certified massage therapist and medical hypnotherapist in LaPorte, Indiana. Visit www.spiritwithinmassage-hypnosis.com to see all services offered by Dr. Judy. For a free personal consultation, please call Dr. Judy Dean at 219-326-1380. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic, 219-326-1380. Welcome back to Peace Explorer on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is your host, Dr. Gail Lash, and we're here with my guest, Diane Sapphire of Cultural Detective. Diane, we've got to wrap it up with you here and go into our peace action. What would you like to leave our listeners with? What words of wisdom? Well, first of all, Gail, I really want to thank you. As I said, I think it's just fantastic that you are doing a uh, show about uh, really exploring the concept of peace. It's so important. And everyone, if you are listening, I would really welcome you. Building cross-cultural competence is so key in our world today because it's going to help us solve so many of the problems that are facing us, be it with all these the refugees and migrants going on, some of you know the wars and violence, the terrorism in our world, intercultural competence, intercultural communication is a key skill. So we offer a series of free webinars. We actually have five or six of them. If you go to culturaldetective.eventbrite.com, and that's eventbrite, which is B-R-I-T-E dot com, uh, you can sign up for any of those free webinars. We also do a blog, but You know, it's a wonderful, the biggest blessing of my life is this community that we have around Cultural Detective of people all over the world, be they with NGOs, governments, uh, schools, really working to build that uh, competence in the intercultural communication sphere. So thank you for helping me get the word out, Gail. You're very welcome. Thanks, Diane, for being on Peace Explorer. Okay, everyone, think about your peace action for the week. It is, this is it. Be your authentic self. Be your one voice. Adapt to new situations by being your true self at all times. So this was a tweet I put out many years ago, uh, these peace activities. And it's kind of seems contrary to what we've been talking about as as in some regards, because to be your true self may go not actually into that cultural norm that you may be visiting of of a new country, a new organization. But think of it this way, that you have your own gifts and talents, you have your own assets, and it really is important not to let those be diverted into who you are 
and bringing those talents into any situation or meeting or event that might involve cultural diversity. So let me read that one more time, the piece uh, activity for the week, and that is be your authentic self, be your one voice, adapt to new situations by being your true self at all times. So I'll put this on our Facebook page, Peace Explorer. Please visit that and share your stories as well. We'd love to hear how you are being your true self in an intercultural, competent way (laughs) in whatever organization you might be working with, be it actually in another land, another nation, or perhaps even right here in your own country, but working with different populations that that are diverse from yourself. Uh, so I, I encourage you to share your stories with that on the Facebook page. So now just talking about how to um, move forward in life, I really encourage you to explore the world, to really get to know people around the planet and go into those situations that may be a little challenging for you, that may open you up to diversity and new ways of thinking. So challenge yourself in that way. And of course, thanks. I want to thank my guest again, Diane Sapphire, a cultural detective, and that's culturaldetective.com. If you want to find out more about me, Dr. Gail Lash, you can go to tourismforpeace.com and you'll find out about our peace classes, our peace master plans to help your business, school, or community become a place of peace, where hopefully you can have those cross cultural dialogues. And also, Uh, If you're wanting to learn about your life and answers for your life, go to our AkashicRecordsGuides.org. You can learn more about that. So let me just say thank you for coming on Peace Explorer today. Remember that peace starts by talking about peace with your neighbors, your coworkers, your family. And so become a Peace Explorer and also a cultural detective. Thanks for tuning in to Peace Explorer on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is your host, Dr. Gail Lash. See you next week. Many blessings. You've been listening to Peace Explorer with your host, Dr. Gail Lash. Listen each week and become closer to the global peace principles for both self and society on Dr. Gail Lash's Peace Explorer. been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.